Like literally everyone who plays games, when we get a game over, we will concoct some elaborate fiction as to why it wasn't actually our fault, such as here, where this is clearly Rockstar's fault for not providing me with a horse who can fly. <laughs> Sometimes, though, game overs are 100% justified because we were being stupid and tried to do something stupid and then the game said, that was stupid, you're dead now. Here are seven times we caused humiliating game overs by doing something unbelievably foolish. Enjoy! Jill? Chris! You're alive! Of course I'm alive. Jill, there's something big going down, and I don't think we're part of the equation. I have to get you out of here. Ugh, it won't open! In our experience in the Resident Evil games, safety procedures are pretty lax in the laboratories of the Umbrella Corporation, what with all the science accidents and virus outbreaks and escaped prototype bioweapons. So when something is so dangerous that Umbrella has gone out of its way to warn you about it, it's probably worth paying attention so you don't end up having to break out the giant substation-powered bioweapon-killing railgun. In fact, not heeding such warnings leads to hands down the most embarrassing way to die in the Resident Evil remake that isn't being eaten whole by a big shark. Clever girl. Later on in the game you find yourself in Umbrella's secret lab underneath the Spencer Mansion, which is accessed via a secret elevator hidden in a fountain, which must be an absolute nightmare for the staff if they want to pop out and run some errands during their lunch break. Parts of the lab are without power, so it's up to you to restore that power by powering up the power machine in the power station. Look, I'm not a power scientist, I just plug stuff into other stuff. Luckily, that's all you have to do to fix the problem. Find a fuel capsule, fill it with nitro compound, by which the game means nitroglycerin, and then plug that into the console in the power room. The hitch is that nitroglycerin is notoriously unstable, and as the game warns you, even so much as breaking into a light jog could be enough to jostle it sufficiently to make it explode. But have you seen how slow Jill's default walk is? I would literally rather die than have to put up with that. Which is good, because that's exactly what happens if you try to run. Man, that's embarrassing. If anyone asks, I was eaten whole by a big shark. Um, I am looking for the lighthouse keeper. Hello, Mr. Twinzen. I don't know where he is, Mr. Twinzen. Little Big Adventure 2 was a 1997 action-adventure game that cast you as hero Twinson, who is trying to figure out why the weather is acting strangely. Maybe the weather wizard will know. Uh, this storm, I wanted to get rid of it, but the lighthouse was closed and I can't find the keeper anywhere. Only he could help me reach the top of the... I guess there's no way of knowing. The aim of the game is to travel across the world of Twin Sun, you heard me, fighting enemies, solving puzzles, and befriending the different species who make Twin Sun their home, including sphere people, anthropomorphic elephants, and rabbit folk. Don't hesitate to educate yourself. Little Big Adventure 2 featured a unique control method whereby Twinson had four different behaviour modes that you could switch between depending on what you were trying to do. These were Normal, Sporty, Aggressive and Discreet, which coincidentally enough was the original Spice Girls lineup before it changed when they got famous. These modes could be switched between at any time, meaning you could run through towns, sneak around enemies and, yes, become aggressive and beat up literally anyone in the entire game. <laughs> Most of the time this would land you in hot water, but it was nothing you couldn't deal with. If you were stupid enough to try beating up the kids in the town school, however, it was a whole different story. But it might make your head swell. Sendal is the prettiest. Fun Frock is a dirty beast. Although, as you can see with that song, they really leave you little choice. Brute. I'll tell my big brother, and he'll beat you up while I laugh, and that'll show you. There are four kids in this class, each apparently with their own big brother, and if you decide to punch them, each will explain, calmly, just how absolutely wrecked you're going to get by their older sibling. Oh, my big brother's gonna take care of you. Which is the sort of thing kids say at school all the time. Only here, it's absolutely true, as you'll find out when you try to leave the school and are immediately and calmly taken apart by a patient queue of older brothers who've all lined up to beat you senseless.
can't help but feel this is partially our fault. <laughs> a nightmare. It was all just a horrible nightmare. I didn't kill anyone. I wasn't dreaming. It all really happened. If you didn't play auteur weirdo David Cage's creepy interactive movie Fahrenheit, or Indigo Prophecy to which the name exactly translates in America, then don't worry, it's pretty simple to get your head around. The world has been subjected to a new ice age caused by magic, spirit mediums are real, and you play as a murderer on the run who was at one point killed by falling off a roller coaster, though he is later mystically resurrected. You know, classic stuff. Anyway, near the start of the game you're playing as said murderer, Lucas, when he wakes up the day after the murder in question, and your job is to make him feel better because Mondays, am I right? Oh, my head. It feels like somebody shoved a steel bar in my brain and then melted it. Gotta make it stop. There's a bunch of stuff to do around the apartment, like taking a shower, drinking some water, and you know, hiding the evidence of the grisly murder you committed, all of which will improve your so-called mental state by a small percentage. I'll change the sheets later. Two of the options available to you are to take some painkillers and to have a drink of alcohol. That should help my migraine. Notice reads, don't take with alcohol. Both are fine options by themselves, but if you choose to do both, get ready for a game over because that is a really unwise combination, both in real life and in the games of auto weirdo David Cage. And that's the end of my story. I mixed alcohol and medication. Still, we know mystical resurrection is a thing in this game, so surely that'll kick in any moment. I'll never know what happened to me in that diner on a cold winter's night. Huh, guess that only works if you fall off a roller coaster. Play stupid. Play clever. Make the mistake of saying no. That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. Unless you've pissed someone off in an Edgar Allan Poe story, it's usually pretty easy to avoid getting entombed in an underground vault. Take Fallout New Vegas, for example, where you can get locked underground for the rest of time, but only if you're stupid and accidentally do it to yourself. In the Dead Money DLC for the Sin City spin-off to the post-apocalyptic RPG series, you accept an invitation to the grand opening of a new casino known as the Sierra Madre, only to be captured and wake up wearing an explosive collar that, if you step out of line, will give you a worse headache than the one you'd usually have after a night out in Vegas. The goal of the DLC is to confront Father Elijah, the rogue Brotherhood of Steel scribe and professional jerk weirdo who set this whole situation up in the first place. When you do finally confront Elijah in the vault of the Sierra Madre Casino, you're given the option to fight him, but not before checking out the vault itself, which is set up to do two things. One, store gold, and two, entomb people for all eternity who wronged Sinclair, the casino's original founder. As such, you'd think you'd want to be pretty careful dicking around with the vault's security controls on account of how one false move could leave you imprisoned forever underneath the Sierra Madre. Or you could just open the file on the computer titled Sinclair's Personal Accounts and see what happens. I mean, how bad could it be? Very bad, turns out, as you've just activated a trap meant for Sinclair's love rival and are now trapped here forever with plenty of time to think about what a dumbass you are. The courier, lured by the promise of the Sierra Madre, could not escape. Once inside the vault, the casino did not let go. When the courier finally passed away, the casino created a new hologram to walk with the other ghosts that filled its casino. A horrible way to go that you wouldn't wish on anyone. Oh, of course, it's a different story if you do it to Elijah. That's just poetic justice. Don't you leave me here. You can't do this to me. I can't help but feel a pang of regret, though, for all that gold I had to leave behind in the vault because I was over-encumbered. Hey, Morgan. Wake up. You're burning daylight. I sent a helicopter to pick you up. It's just a few tests. Don't forget to wear your suit. 2017's Prey is a beautiful, thought-provoking shooter that explores themes of identity and unreliable memories while also giving you the ability to turn into a mug and roll around the place, which is exactly as much fun as you'd always imagined it would be. 
to get to those parts of the game, however, you have to get out of the game's initial opening sequence, in which Morgan Yu wakes up in their apartment and attempts to go to the first day of their new job at the Transtar Corporation. Sure, it's easy to get distracted looking around Morgan's apartment, reading things, fiddling with objects, and seeing exactly how much of Morgan's furniture you can take out of their apartment and load into the building's one working elevator, but at least that's all happening on your own time, and there is no public permanent record of your inability to take Arcane's thoughtful masterpiece seriously. That is, unless you somehow manage to kill yourself during this introductory scene, thanks to a lapse of judgement that is as deadly as it is deeply stupid. Considering that the scuttling spidery aliens haven't even shown up yet, getting yourself killed on the way from your apartment to the roof is pretty embarrassing, especially considering that to do it, you have to clamber onto the nose of the helicopter that's supposed to be taking you to work, and then walk into the rotor blades to decapitate yourself. <laughs> And there's an achievement for it, so now everyone who looks at your gamer card knows that you managed to kill yourself in a stupid way before the game had even got going. Probably for the best though, you really need to have your wits about you if you're going to be able to control a coffee cup. The original Rise of the Triad, released in 1994, was an early and influential first-person shooter that included such innovations as enemies begging for their lives, bullet holes, and the ability to turn into a dog. The game got a reboot in 2013 that didn't receive quite as warm a reception as the original, but did include a spectacularly ill-advised way to kill yourself and the entire population of Los Angeles at the same time. So that's good news. I mean, for the purposes of this list, not the fictional inhabitants of the game's Los Angeles. Super bad news for them. The plot of the game sees you playing as a member of a Spec Ops unit trying to stop the terrorist organization known as the Triad Cult from destroying Los Angeles with a giant bomb. After blasting your way through the secret island that's housing the cult, you finally end up in the lair of the cult's leader, El Oscuro, who is a magic floating monk who can shoot lasers out of his hands. I don't know guys, that's pretty impressive. Maybe this cult is onto something. Anyway, El Oscuro's lair is all set up for his evil deeds, including the launch console for his big LA destroying bomb, complete with big red button. Now, common sense would say that it's probably a pretty stupid idea to press that button. On the other hand, you could just go for it and see what happens. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, that, I guess, that's the worst that could happen. You'll also unlock an achievement called You Suck, just in case you were in any doubt as to how much of a bad move this was. Suck. You know what, achievement? That's fair. Mom! The new kid is trying to play with the cube of ultimate destruction! You be nice to all your friends, Eric. Be a good sharer. Good sharer? It'll blow up the galaxy! Stupid for a story that is ostensibly about some school kids trying to find a missing cat, South Park the Fractured But Whole sure includes a bunch of horrible and bizarre ways for you to die. You're dead. Top of the list though has to be this next example which not only kills you but destroys the planet and the entire Milky Way galaxy. Hey, 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 hey! Do not touch that! That device can blow up the entire Milky Way galaxy, Jesus! Right, that's what I said. This harmless looking Rubik's Cube in Cartman's basement is actually something called the Cube of Ultimate Destruction, a cosmically powerful artifact that lives up to its name by being able to destroy entire galaxies if it's disturbed. You touch it again and we all f***ing die! Naturally, when you've got something that dangerous in your possession, you want to make sure it's adequately protected, which is why it's been placed under a bell jar on a rickety stool. There is a siren on top of it though, which uh, doesn't do anything if you give it a whack. stop! Each time you nudge the cube, Cartman will give you a warning about what will happen if you don't stop, and to be fair, you really have to put some effort into knocking it about, but if you persevere, you can actually dislodge the cube, at which point, the thing that everyone warns you would happen, happens. Obviously. You're dead. Okay, we feel pretty stupid now, but at least we get to listen to the Fractured But Whole Game Over song, so, you know, every cloud. They tear your dreams apart. 
There you have it, those were some of the humiliating game overs we've caused by being stupid in video games. Got any more favourites we missed? Annoyed we missed out all of Nier Automata? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from Outside Xbox. And thank you for watching.